Hello, welcome back to another video. My name is Charlotte, but you can call me Charlie. I am a partially sighted digital artist, and these are my partial insights. Now, this video is actually part two of yesterday's video, because yesterday's video was quite long, and so I, I cut it short with the plan to continue today, and so here we are. Um, I was answering questions in yesterday's video because I got such an incredible response to the first video that I uploaded and there were some questions in that and I wanted to answer them before we carried on. So if you haven't seen part one of this video series or yesterday's video even, I will link them both below so that you can catch up. So I'm just going to jump straight in to today's video and I'm going to carry on answering the questions. So yesterday I talked you through my extensive to be read list and today I am going to talk you through some of the other questions that I was asked about. So the next question is my favourite artist. So my favourite artist um, is Vincent van Gogh and that might surprise you because I'm a digital artist and so one would assume that I would name a digital artist as my favourite artist. Um, but I find Vincent van Gogh to be so inspiring. Everything that he stood for, everything that he represented, and his work as well is just so, so beautiful. But it's more than his work, it's him, it's his life, his soul, his spirit, everything. When he died, he left 896 paintings behind, but he left so much more than that too. He left a way of life, uh, just a being. And I find everything about him so fascinating and so inspiring. I think, in truth, that is the sort of life that I would have loved to have lived. I mean, I'm very fortunate, the life that I live, and I, you know, I get to be an artist at one of the best times to be an artist, you know. And I'm so fortunate for that, but I I wish that I could have been there in Montmartre with the artists and the ladies of the night with all of the wine and cheese and just living in that environment, you know, travelling across Europe, literally dying for my art. And I I admire that. I admire the amount of his life and soul that he poured into his art and I also admire his his way of being and just just everything you know and how even through adversity and through all of his struggles and through all of his mental health problems you know he persevered and he continued to create no matter what and I love that and I one of my favorite Van Gogh stories is that when he moved to Arles into the yellow house as it was um, in Arles and he had an artist coming to stay with him. I believe it was Gorgoyne, although um, I could be wrong, now that I've said that I could be wrong, um, I will name check the person in the description, but I believe it was Gorgoyne um, and he was going to stay with Vincent and Vincent had power put into the house just so that he could create any time of the day or night because he wanted his artist friend to come and stay but not only that he wanted his artist friend to be able to create whenever they wanted and I love that I love that the first house in Arles that had um, gas lamps and a primitive power as it was back then was Vincent's house because he wanted his friend to be able to create constantly and I love that. I I just, the man had no money. He had no money whatsoever, but he did that for his friend so that creativity could live on. And I also think it's incredible. And I, I love that in Vincent's lifetime, he only sold one painting. So he sold the Red Vineyard to Anna Bock, and that was it. Of the 896 paintings that he did, and some of them that sell for millions and millions and millions now, he sold one in his lifetime. And he never got to see the incredible artist that he was. I mean, well, obviously he knew what an incredible artist he was, but he never got to see what a prolific artist he became. And I, I find that so fascinating. I really, really do, that he had no idea what an amazing, amazing artist he would go on to become. And 
it must have been sad for him to die, you know, having only sold one painting. And so, you know, I, I just love his story and I love the freedom, the liberation and everything that he represents. And that is something I try to channel into my artwork. And so, although we work with different mediums and, you know, we are a hundred years apart, 200, nearly 200 years apart, actually, I should say, um, you know, I try as best I can to channel some Vincent into my work and I'm very proud of that. So yeah, my favourite artist is definitely Vincent van Gogh, without a doubt. But I want this to be a two-way conversation, so who is your favourite artist? I mean, you're sitting across from me at my dining room table, so please, who is your favourite artist? I would love to know. Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you. Okay, next question. So, the music that I'm currently listening to. So, again, um, books are a huge inspiration for me, but music is also something that I'm constantly listening to. Um, I have a record collection, a really, really extensive record collection that I am obsessed with, and so the music that I'm listening to changes on a daily basis because I have so many different genres in my collection and I'm also addicted to Spotify as well and so there's the combination of the two because my record player lives downstairs in my house and my office on the top floor. I, you know, I, I would be incredibly obnoxious if I had my music, my record player on loud enough to hear on the top floor. So I do listen to Spotify as well. But um, the albums that I'm currently enjoying and the ones that I've had on repeat for a couple of days now are these ones that I have here. <laughs> Here's one I prepared earlier. Okay, this is one of my favourite Elvis albums of all time and it's Elvis as recorded at Madison Square Garden. And this contains one of the best versions of American Trilogy that I have ever heard. It is truly stunning and I absolutely love it. I also really, really love his version of The Impossible Dream. I think that's magnificent on here too, but honestly, the whole album from start to finish is just sensational. And I've had it on a lot lately. I think, I suppose, slightly inspired by the fact that Lisa Marie Presley died recently and so they've been playing a lot of Elvis on the radio and they've been, there's been a lot of Elvis in the news and it just brought him back to the forefront of my mind and reminded me that I had this fantastic album and reminded me how much I love it. And so that is one of the albums that I've been listening to a lot lately. Next up, another album that I've been listening to a lot and it sort of follows on from a similar sort of theme or a similar sort of genre. Um, although, not really. But <laughs> I, c I could cause some controversy by saying that because it's not a similar sort of genre at all. So Elvis was the king of rock and roll and this is the first family of country music. This is the Carter family, favourites by. And I absolutely love this album. I actually, I love anything by the Carter family. I really, really do. But this is the original Carter family. So this is Mabel Carter, her husband and... I believe it's one of the daughters, um, but this is before June Carter, this is before they all joined, and it's just magnificent. It's absolutely magnificent. I mean, the Carter family with June Carter and with her sisters was also incredible, but this is just such a raw sound, and just the songs of the old country, just, they're beautiful. I mean, I love... I love English folk music and I love Cecil Sharp and the whole history of English folk music but I also am fascinated by American folk and country music and the old mountain songs and the songs of old country as they call it. It's just beautiful and the Carter family have such an amazing sound and I love them. And this album I've been listening to a lot lately. I especially love Never Let the Devil Get the Upper Hand. And I think that's some solid advice for life, don't you? Never let the devil get the upper hand. Okay, the next album that I've had on repeat, to be honest, is, is on repeat in my life on a permanent basis because it's just such a sensational album. And that is The Last Waltz 
by the band. This album is a live album that contains some of the most sensational live recordings ever. There is um, a performance on here of Joni Mitchell with the band and she sings a song called Coyote and oh my goodness, it's just divine, absolutely divine. One of the best live recordings ever. It's magnificent. And I also love, and I know it's a little bit cliche to say, but I love the version of um, The Night They Drove Old Dixie Down, which is on this album as well. It's sensational, but this is just three discs of absolute heaven. It really is, and I, I constantly have this album. I would say I listen to this album at least once a week. It's one of my true prized possessions, and yeah, it's magnificent. So that is something else that I've been listening to a lot lately. And finally, following on from the Madison Square Garden album, which was the first one I showed you from Elvis, is this. Now, in 2015, I think it was, or possibly 2014, 2014, sorry, I went to New York and I went to Madison Square Garden to see Above and Beyond play, and they launched this album that night, um, and it was a magnificent night, it really, really was, and when I was listening to Elvis at Madison Square Garden the other day, I remembered this album, and I remembered that I had it in just all of the memories of New York and Madison Square Garden came flooding back. So this is a beautiful box set, but it has um, it has a single in it of We're All You Need and Quieter Is Louder in a beautiful case with some beautiful artwork on it. But it also has the CD in here because I'm not I'm not all about that vinyl all of the time. You know, I'm not one of those people. I do listen to CDs as well. And I've had this CD on repeat quite a lot because it's just such a euphoric album it just gives me such a great feeling and I listen to it and it just is like wow it just raises me up so much and takes me back to being in Madison Square Garden with them in New York and just so many amazing memories there is a song on this album called Blue Sky Action and it's just one of those songs that I listen to and I can still remember where I was the first time I heard it. And I was at Washington Square Park. And I can still remember hearing it for the first time and just looking up and thinking, oh my goodness, this is like, this is so cool. Because I was, how old was I? 2014, so I'd have been about 23, 24, I think something like that, I can't do the maths in my head, that's quite embarrassing, I can't do the maths in my head, but um, I was in my early 20s and I just was there in New York with one of my favourite bands at the time and with that amazing song and just those memories and so I've been channeling that euphoria into some of the artwork that I've been doing lately and so this is also an album that I've had on repeat a lot lately. But again, as I said before, I, I want this to be a two-way discourse. I don't just want this to be me talking incessantly at the camera. And so, you know, tell me, what are you listening to at the moment? What are you loving? What, what albums fire you up? What takes you back in time? What gives you that euphoric feeling? I would really, really love to know. I really would. I... I love that, I love, and I love recommendations, so any recommendations you want to give me, I'm always, always open for new books to listen to, new albums to listen to, absolutely anything at all you want to recommend, I am interested, believe me. Okay, so, next question. Oh yeah, this was another one I got asked a lot, um, what do I do when I'm creatively stuck? So... I I get creatively stuck every now and then. I think everyone does, especially when you're creating full time. I think it's very easy to to just get jammed and think, oh god, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and the things that I do is I write. I write a lot when I'm creatively stuck, and I sit and talk to a camera and waffle like this. <laughs> um, no, I'm kidding. But I I do write a lot when I'm creatively stuck. I I have a fantasy cafe that I go to in my head. Um, where I 
imagine what it would be like. Like I said when I talked about Vincent and how I wish that I could be in Montmartre with the wine and cheese in the cafe at midnight, like Vincent's painting, you know, and how I wish I could be in that moment. And so when I'm feeling creatively stuck, I write and I write about my cafe and I called it the Ochre Moon Cafe and I write about that and I imagine these wild scenarios of what would happen in this coffee shop and, and sometimes I, I imagine sitting there and I'll even write like I'm you know I'm sitting at the coffee shop and I'm stuck and and then I imagine and I, I find myself building this world in my head and all of a sudden this world comes to life in my paper and in however I'm writing it sometimes I write it in notebooks sometimes I write it on the computer sometimes I dictate it if I'm having a bad eye day and um, I just find that by taking myself out of my present reality even if I can't literally take myself out of my reality you know even if I'm you know if I'm stuck at home for whatever reason if I if I sit and write I find that takes me out of my reality and allows me to sort of unstick myself and most of the stories are you know utter nonsense but I, I love it and it makes me smile and it makes me happy and yeah so when I'm feeling stuck creatively I go to the Oka Moon Cafe um, or sometimes I suppose the more boring answer would be sometimes I go for a walk because again, I I live in a really, really beautiful city. Salisbury is gorgeous, it, it really, really is. And so I am fortunate enough to have many beautiful places to go for a walk as well. And so if the weather is nice and, you know, it's a pleasant day and it's the right time of day, I will go for a wander and, and just soak in some of the beautiful landscapes and all of that. Like I love, I love walking around here because, um, you know, we've got Salisbury Cathedral and Constable painted Salisbury Cathedral, in fact Constable did a few pictures of Salisbury and to be able to walk around and to, to know that you're walking where the likes of John Constable has walked is just incredible again, you know, because he's another artist that I find incredibly fascinating and I, I had an amazing experience back in 2018, I went to um, I went to the Hayway and I went to see where the Hayway was, where he painted, and um, Stratford, uh, Flatford Mill, I nearly said Stratford Mill, then Flatford Mill, and I went there and I saw the Hayway and where it was painted and I stood where he stood and there is something so sensational about being able to stand where he stood, just be in that moment, you know, separated by years but in that moment is just magnificent and so Sometimes if I'm really, really stuck, then I'll go for a walk around town and I'll go and walk where Constable walked and where hundreds of artists have walked, you know, because gosh, there must be thousands of paintings of Salisbury Cathedral in the world and it's, it's inspiring to know that you're walking where they've all walked before, you know, and yeah, it's, it's special. So that's what I do if I'm creatively stuck. I'll either write myself into the Oka Moon Cafe or I will take myself for a walk and I will follow in Constable's footsteps and I will follow in the footsteps of all the other artists that have gone before. And I love it. And the lucky thing about living in Salisbury is that there are artists everywhere. You know, you can quite often walk down a street and you'll, you'll see an artist just stopped to paint or stopped to sketch and draw and I love that, you know, it's it's so lucky. I've I've never lived in a city like this where that happens. I've I've never known it, never ever. And so I'm sure it does go on in other places in the UK and I'm sure it goes on in other places around the world, but I have never known that and so I I love it. I really, really do. And I feel so blessed to live in a place where that happens. Um I really do. I tell you what, um instead of sitting here at my dining room table chatting like we are. Would you like to come for a walk with me now? Would you like to see Salisbury Cathedral and some of Constable's views? Yeah? Do you fancy that? Okay, well you lace your shoes up and we'll get ready to go for a walk and I will, I will say goodbye to you now but keep watching and we'll go for a little walk around Salisbury and we'll go and have a look at that beautiful cathedral. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye.